I've already showed you how to set up Home Assistant to locally control your own smart home tech. How to use Home Assistant Voice to run lo local large language models that control your smart home tech. And now, thanks to the indie hardware makers at Sanctuary Systems, I can show you how to do all of that from a Raspberry Pi with a graphics card attached. This is their Sentinel Core Mini ITX motherboard, which comes preloaded with a Raspberry Pi Compute Module 5 with a custom fork of Home Assistant with GPU drivers already installed. Let me show you around the board, then we'll get it up and running and see what this puppy can do. For being an ITX motherboard, it's remarkably empty. Most ITX boards are fighting for every micrometer of space, often turning to vertical PCBs to get enough room to fit the socket, RAM, M.2s, PCIe slot, or the I.O. But this thing, well, besides the board-to-board -board connectors to the CM5, you've got a breadboard area, Pi GPIO headers, the PCIe slots, and a little bit of rear I.O. Two USB ports, USB-C for programming, two HDMIs, and Ethernet, and that's about it. The CM5 has Wi-Fi built in, and Sanctuary includes a detachable antenna to go along with the 3D printed I.O. shield. You've also got two 4-pin PWM fan headers, and a place to plug in your case's power button. The uni unique thing here is that the Pi is powered primarily from the 24-pin ATX power supply connection. And that's where the 3.3 volts, 5 volts, and 12 volts for the breadboard, PCIe slots, and fans is pulled from. There are a few quirks. This is a pre-production sample, so the tweaks that I've had to do to get it working are to be expected, and they have shown a perfect attitude to feedback, learning from mistakes to make a better product when this finally ships out to customers. There are a few tweaks that I haven't yet mentioned to them, but I would like to see. Stuff like a cleaner way to connect the breadboard section to the Pi headers or the GPIO that isn't just jumper wires, more options for storage like the SD card slots and maybe even a PCIe switch to have an M.2 slot and the GPU since you won't be using either at full speed the two Gen 3 lanes all that much, and an audio codec built in would be excellent. But if you're familiar with Pis and compute modules in particular, you might be squinting at this and thinking, gosh, that looks familiar. And you'd be right, because, well, it's kind of just this, the Compute Module 5 I.O. board, but embiggened. They've swapped the M.2 slot for a PCIe slot, made it taller to fit the MITx standard, added the 24-pin, and swapped to 4-pin fan headers. There are a couple of other changes, like the transistor that latches the power supply on when the Pi is on, but for the most part, you've just got a modified dupe. You might look at that then and wonder why you would pay the premium price tag of €219.99, or about £190 right now, when a CM5 and I.O. board will set you back just over a hundred. Well, the short answer is one, the I.O. board doesn't let you connect a GPU to the Pi, at least easily anyway, and two, you're not just buying the hardware, but the full package. Sanctuary Systems' custom fork of Home Assistant not only comes pre-installed and ready to use, but has graphics drivers built in, and a GPU accelerated version of Llama and Whisper ready to go. That fork is still being improved, bugs fixed, and I have to assume more features will be added too. That's kind of where the added value goes. So let's look at that added value by setting this thing up. With a power supply connected and an RX 7600 in the PCIe slots, the board fires up, and with Ethernet connected, it's ready to go. Head to the URL displayed on screen, in my case that's 192.168.1.4, uh, 41, uh, and port 80, uh, 8123, and run through the Haas setup. To run local AI, you will need to head to the add-on store and install Sanctuary's version of llama.cpp and whisper.cpp, along with Piper, open wake word, and you will need to install Hacks too, that's Home Assistant Community Store, which once the add-on, which I put in quotes because it just 
downloads the package. You will then need to reboot Home Assistant, then go into devices and integrations to configure hacks. And then once you've done that and connected your GitHub to it, you'll then want to find and install extended open AI conversation. You'll also need a mic and speakers to do that locally. You will also want to install assist microphone. Then the Wyoming protocol should pick it all up and once you set up a voice assistant, you'll be ready to go. Now all of those steps are covered in my existing videos, so if you do want more information and more than just a quick run through of what you need, stuff like the Piper voices, whisper settings, or the Olama models, check those videos out in the cards above. The fact that this thing is GPU accelerated means responses are near instant much faster than my current setup, and the cool thing about using extended OpenAI conversation tool to run the conversation agent is that you can do a whole lot with it. It can do Google searches, play YouTube or Plex or Netflix videos on your TV, tell you the weather, give you the history of Home Assistant entities, and even get energy data from Home Assistant. Being tied to an LLM means not only can you ask it the pointless questions about the meaning of life and get long responses back, but it can collate responses and data together to present it kind of however you like. The joy of self-hosting it means that you can tune everything to how you want it. Be that your AI sounding like Jarvis, a slightly robotic Scottish woman, or really anything, and even how it responds by changing the prompt. If I'm being honest though, that sort of thing isn't really for me. My particular flavour of autism means that I care a lot about practical, useful features, and a lot less about customizations and what appear to me anyway as kind of gimmicky features, and I genuinely think if you add a way to use some proper storage on this, you're getting awfully close to having the perfect, easy to use home sort of server in a tiny box. You can have Home Assistant, Plex or Jellyfin, and a pie hole all running from here with GPU acceleration. That's kind of amazing, and all with a fairly low power and fairly low cost unit. That would be amazing. But there is a bit of a catch. An AM4 ITX motherboard can be had for around £100, and a Ryzen 5600, a 6 core desktop CPU, can be had for just £90. Admittedly, you will have to sink another £30 into it to get 16 gigs of RAM, but then you've got a powerful desktop 6 core that's upgradable, with plenty of storage options, a GPU slot, more I.O., and it still fits in an ITX case for pretty similar money. That's essentially what I did, except I don't care about the size, so I have a desktop case with a 1400F and two GPUs, but still. That does mean that you would need to do all of the installation of Home Assistant and all that sort of stuff yourself, but it does give you a bit more flexibility, so maybe that's something to consider. Anyway, this is a really cool board, and should be plug and play, and hell, it's even made in the EU. Eisler, the uh, German uh, PCB maker, are the ones who are building these boards, so that's really cool too. It's also open source. Everything from the Haas fork to the PCB files are available on their GitHub repos, and you know how much I love a good open source hardware project. Still, I don't think it's for me, especially because I have most of this set up, but with desktops instead. But if you want a super easy to set up Home Assistant board that can also do GPU accelerated AI stuff, well then this is a fantastic choice. It's still on pre-order, with plans to ship in Q3 of this year, so if you're interested in one, check them out at the link in the description below. Of course, those are my thoughts, so I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the Sanctuary Systems Sentinel Core motherboard? Is this something for you, for your home lab setup, or would you rather a desktop or something else entirely? Let me know in the comments down below. I will leave a link to this in the description, like I said, you can check out the subscribe button to see more videos like this one, and you can also check out plenty of other videos on the end cards, including those Home Assistant voice and LLM setup videos on the end cards. If you want to check out my own open source hardware, the open source response time and latency testing tools, those are available at osrtt.com, linked in the description as well, and otherwise, yeah. 
Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed us. We'll see you on the next video.